Hi everyone, my name is Praveen Kumar and as part of my research work under the guidance of Dr. Jacob, I'll be discussing the Panamite Yangi War as an analog for sovereignty on Mars. Mars exploration has become a prevalent topic of discussion these days, especially among space enthusiasts, and many of us are aware of NASA and SpaceX as the most prominent players who plan to send humans to Mars. However, there are other space players as well, such as the China National Space Administration and the UA Space Agency, which perhaps only a few might have heard of. These two countries also intend to send humans to Mars. Now, there has been a lot of work on the technical aspect of these space missions. That is, most of the discussions involve the feasibility, cost efficiency, and sustainability of the technology of the missions in the long term. However, much less work has been done on the governance side of the space settlement. That is, how will human societies govern themselves on Mars when they colonize it, if they ever do so? And what laws will they adhere to? And what can we improve over there in terms of governance from our own history back on Earth? So the Outer Space Treaty, which was adopted in 1967, is an international agreement that establishes guidelines for the peaceful exploration and use of outer space. This is the only example of a regulatory agreement between nations on their conduct in space. The treaty emphasizes international cooperation, making space exploration a global effort for the benefit of all humanity. Its significance lies in setting the foundation for responsible behavior in space, ensuring that space remains a realm of peace, scientific research, and shared benefits for all. Now, some of the important points that the treaty states are Space exploration is free for all countries and it should benefit everyone and that it is open for scientific research to all without any discrimination. No country can claim ownership of the moon or any other celestial body. That is, space is definitely not up for national ownership of any single country. And space must be used only for peaceful purposes. No weapons of mass destruction are allowed in orbit or on celestial bodies. And countries keep ownership and control of the objects they launch into space, no matter where they are in space or when they return to Earth. Now, the Panama Yankee War was a series of conflicts from 1769 to 1784 that overlapped with the American Revolutionary War. This war was between three parties, that is settlers from Connecticut, who were known as the Yankees, settlers from Pennsylvania, who were known as the Panamites, and the indigenous tribe of Wyoming Valley, the Iroquois Indians. So the story began when British King Charles II mistakenly granted the same land in Wyoming Valley to both Connecticut in 1662 and Pennsylvania in 1681, respectively, as part of their charters to establish settlements over there. In this case, the Panamites had occupied that land before the Yankees got. And because of this, both Yankees and Panamites started to have conflicts, which led to competing land claims, which is the primary sovereignty issue identified in this case study. Some other issues were the inability of the then newly formed U.S. government to resolve the conflict, the rights of the Iroquois Indians who were pushed out of the homelands or of their own homelands, and the refusal of the British government to intervene in the dispute, even though it had started because of them. So the purpose here is to identify the critical gov governance lessons that can be extracted to ensure a peaceful governance of human society if humans ever inhabit Mars, because the colonies that will be established over there will be multilingual and multicultural. So some of the important lessons that can be derived from this case study is that if land is ever allocated, then it has to be done in a very precise manner to each country with proper coordinates and the process has to be transparent and democratic without any biases. There has to be a mechanism of shared governance with a proper channel to address grievances put forward by member countries. And last but not least, each all of these practices, that is the distribution of resources, will have to be done in a very sustainable manner if it has to be uh, long term and commercially viable. Last but not least, it is very important for us to understand that even if Mars is not inhabited, key learnings can be derived from this case study, which can help improve our governance back here on Earth. Thank you very much.